So what we know that ET, PVM and MF, these are these three, and we will use the abbreviations for simplicity, are so-called classic myeloproliferative neoplasms. Myeloproliferative means the disease of the bone marrow where cells grow without control. Now with ET, we have high platelets, but it is the disease of all the cells. With PV, you have high red blood cells, and in many patients, you have high white cells and platelets. In myelofibrosis, it's paradoxically, many patients present with too few cells because of reactive bone marrow fibers or fibrosis that limits the growth of the cells. So these are the three diseases that have underlying problem. Same problem in these three conditions, which is high activity of a proteins in this, inside the bone marrow cells, proteins inside the bone marrow cells, a cascade of protein that makes cells grow without control. We call this a jack stat pathway. I had patients, they say jack stat highway. It's active all the time. This is a, a protein jack two, and then the stat protein and then others. So we call it jack stat pathway. In super active, active in normal person when we need to make blood, but in the diseased person, active because of acquired mutations that affect that highway, jacks that pathway or highway, and makes it uh, work all the time. That's why we have so many cells. And there are three mutations, which are part of diagnostic process. You test for these. You can test in blood or in a bone marrow sample. And these are JAK2 mutation, color reticulin mutation, and MIPL mutation. They are almost always exclusive of each other and about 90, 95% of the patients would have one or the other. There are still very few patients that have none of these three, which is interesting and we, we are and others looking for uh, other reasons in these few patients. But one of the three is present and it's part of the diagnostic process as well. I didn't emphasize this before, but it is present as a part of the bone marrow evaluation. That's where it goes. And um, it is therefore uh, helpful to test for it. But one can test for other mutations. Many patients have many other mutations that have nothing to do with the jack that pathway. And that in part, in large part, is responsible why people have different disease, ETPV or myelofibrosis. We explain this that way because of other genetic abnormalities, other abnormalities that we cannot really describe yet. The genetics is not the whole picture. There are other parts, I'm sure, in bone marrow environment, in other factors that control the genetic expression and so on that contribute why a patient with the JAKSTAT hyperactivity has ET and one other has myelofibrosis. We don't really fully understand that. And of course, there is a, a plethora of patients in between that uh, are not all the same. So genetics do carry a lot of weight in what happens with the patients and we do test for that. In addition to testing for JAK2, color reticulin, and ripple, we test for multiple others. That's routinely done in academic centers. It's very valuable, and it should be standard practice. The main utility of widespread testing for additional mutations is to assess the prognosis of the patients. If we are looking at the bone marrow, blood, chemistry, and physical exam, splenomegaly, and presence of these driver mutations, jak tech color reticulin or MIPL, we call them driver mutations, they drive that highway. If that is the complexity of the diagnosis, then the next step is, as you remember, the patient will say, how long I'm gonna live? Well, obviously the, that information comes from the historical experience and I always emphasize that. But there is a valuable information from historical perspective to semi-intelligently tell the patients what to expect in general terms. Since the introduction of the genetic testing in academic centers, we have enhanced our ability to prognosticate. Initially, 10 or more years ago, we would be looking at the age of the patients, how the patients uh, fares, the, the symptoms, the anemia or a white blood cell count or blast. These would be kind of common prognostic factors for assessment of the outcome of the patients. But now we add information on the presence of one or the other of the driver mutations and the presence of a number and types of these other additional, which call them somatic mutations that have nothing to do with JAKSAT pathway. And you can see now how the prognostication also has a flavor of complexity. And it is really not that easy. And we keep moving that forward, uh, that prognostication effort is keep moving forward to 
assess the outcome of the patients better and better for one particular reason. If we have a sense that the patient, based on this prognostic scoring systems, have a poor outcome, which we define as the life expectancy less than five years, then that patient should be referred to the transplant, and transplant should be done because the benefit of a cure and the risk of dying through the transplant procedure, unfortunately, that's the reality, is justifiable if the prognostic scoring system tells you that the life expectancy is less than five years. That's the main role for the genetic complexity testing, looking also at the chromosomes that might be broken, as done on a bone marrow sample, and dividing patients in prognostic scoring groups to guide the decision-making on the transplant. Mm -hmm.